Radio 2.0 is brought to you by Gifts for Hams. Find their website at www.gifts4hams.com. Get your call sign or club logo engraved on virtually anything you want. Specializing in ham radio related gift ideas, Gifts for Hams is your one stop shop for lighted call sign displays, coffee mugs, coasters, drinking glasses, smartphone cases, and so much more. Shop giftsforhams.com and tell them Ham Radio 2.0 sent you. Ham Radio 2.0, episode 144. An actual episode number, not somewhere around. <laughs> We're somewhere down there. 144, that's where we should be right now. Hopefully I don't have to go back and change that later. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. And this is my YouTube channel that I titled Ham Radio 2.0 for the purposes of showing everyone what is new in amateur radio. So go check my website at uh, livefromthehamshack.tv or hamradio the number two dot com. So I was privileged to meet up with a couple of the guys from Hytera um, at Dayton, and I had tried to get um, them to do a short interview, and we just couldn't get the timing down. But uh, Terry Gillard, out in um, outside of Las Vegas, he's in Henderson, Nevada, uh, is a high terror dealer, and he deals to amateurs. He has, uh, I, and I asked Terry if I could give his information, and he said, "Yeah, sure, go ahead." So, his website is uh, TTG communications.com tango tango golf communications.com and I'm going to do a screen cap here so that we can see that as well but he was gracious enough to loan me this radio uh, I didn't purchase this I have to send it back to him when we're done and he loaned me this radio for the purposes of demonstrating on the show um, this is the high terra AR482G like golf. AR for amateur radio. Because if you go to hightera.com forward slash amateur, this radio is featured there. So unlike Motorola, Hightera is starting to delve into the amateur world, which is good news for us, because now we get commercial grade radios. Um, this is not going to be a cheap radio. It's not going to be another knockoff of something else from China. Hightera's are made in China, but they are a Motorola competitor. And some of you out there have probably used high terror radios before, and you know that the quality is comparative to Motorola. In fact, I've heard some Motorola guys say that they actually like the quality of the audio better on the high terror. I don't have much experience to talk to that one way or the other, but today we're going to look at. Yep, that's going. This is. Um, Let's look, uh, well, the first thing let's look at is, uh, this is the website I just told you about, hightera.us. I think I said hightera.com. Hightera.us forward slash amateur, and of course that radio is on the very f front page of that. It's got built-in Bluetooth and GPS, which is something we see sometimes. Uh, well, the Motorola 7 XPR7550 has Bluetooth. I'm not aware of any other amateur-based DMR radio that has Bluetooth right now. Um, there's some add-on. You can get a Bluetooth add-on that will go into, like, the two-prong Kenwood connector. You can do that, but I'm talking about built-in Bluetooth. So so this has Bluetooth, so you can get a Bluetooth headset and uh, connect it to the radio and have a earpiece for it. I couldn't find... I dug through this site a little bit earlier, and... Um, if we do full technical specs, channel capacity is 256, so that's limited, okay? Uh, most of your Titera, TYT radios, Anytone, the, the Alliance HD1, uh, even the, the Radiotity GD77, most of those have about a 2,000 channel capacity uh, right now because they're built for such things as the amateur market, which we need those that many channels because there's so many repeaters and hotspots and talk groups out there. Um, but when I asked them about channel capacity and contact capacity at Dayton, the Hytera guys, they said, we're working on expanding that. So expect that to be upgraded soon, probably through firmware, I would imagine, but don't expect it to stay at 256. 
I can't find anything on this page or any other page I looked at. Um, you can see, yeah, this is Terry's website right here, tggcommunications.com. He's a Motorola dealer as well, it looks like. And he's got a lot of commercial-grade products on his website. So if you are interested in pur purchasing Hytera products and you have a ham radio license, contact Terry. Maybe he can do something for you. Maybe he can't. He didn't give me any price quotes. I don't know. But um, he's probably going to do better for you than most places would. Some places don't care for your ham, but he does. So... Um, I couldn't find anything, and also HRO carries this because the guys at the Hytera booth were, at, I'm sorry, the guys from Hytera were at the HRO booth. Um, so if you look up AR42G right here, and they've got it. Uh, they've got it listed for two thirty nine ninety five, which is actually a pretty darn good price. That's less than I thought it'd be. That's comparable to the price of, like, say, a Connect System CS seven hundred and fifty. So, that's good. But even on this page right here, I can't find anything that says how many contacts it holds. I'm pretty sure when I asked the guys that at Dayton, they said a thousand. But again, they said, but we're working on upgrading that. I said, right now it's only a thousand. But we're working on upgrading that. So as far as channel capacity and contacts, uh, contact manager right now, this radio doesn't have what your TYTs and your Anytones have. But you're going to get a better quality radio out of this one, hands down. So right here I have the programming software. And if you look at it, I, just, I read the radio, and this is what was in there. This is a demo unit that, uh, that Terry sent me again. And he's got some stuff in here like that. I, and if you look at the... I mean, this this is obviously very, very similar to the Connect Systems programming software, CPS, for the CS750 or the CS800 mobile. Um, so it's... Uh, should be very familiar to those of you who have used those radios before. So let's add a channel, and I'm just going to call it... I'm going to call it Jason. And let's go to right here, and I don't remember. This is a good time to plug dmrtexas.net. If you are in Texas or traveling through Texas or interested in DMR in Texas for whatever reason, go to dmrtexas.net. We have a complete list of repeaters throughout the state. We have code plugs, and we have a national code plug database. You can see these guys. These are people who have sent us code plugs. If you have a code plug for anywhere in the United States for any radio, that you're using on DMR for amateur radio, and you wouldn't mind sharing that code plug, send it here, and we will post it to this website. You can see we've got a few states already, California, uh, Georgia, North Carolina, Ohio, South Carolina, Virginia, Wyoming, and we've got MD380, MD380, CSC 800D, this kind of stuff. Contributor, a link to your website or QRZ page that kind of thing. So there's a lot of code plugs out there we don't have, but we're trying to build a national database, so help us out. Anyway, go to, uh, let's see. I don't remember the repeater assignments for the Grapevine repeater closest to me. I don't have my, I don't currently have my backyard repeater hooked up. I was doing something with it the other day. Okay, so we're going to go to Talk Group 2, Tarrant Metro. That's what we're going to do. So let's do that. Uh, color code 1, slot 2, and we will, 440.5, here, offset of 5.0, copy, and you'll notice it changes this field, contact name, let me look here and see what he's got, he may not even have talk group 10 in his contacts, 
It's going to be here. TMR service. Yeah, this is just like the CS800 software. Hytera Local 2 is what he's ta calling Talk Group 2. And let's add uh, uh, Local 10. Ten, okay. Add. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to go back to channel Jason. <laughs> I just called it that for the for the heck of it. Uh, let's see. Hey, look, Ham Radio 2.0. I wonder what he put in there for that. I wonder what that is. Contact Radio 2.0. 31075. Oh, 31075 is a Brandmeister talk group for the Ham Radio Workbench guys. That's not my channel. That's Ham Radio Workbench. I'm going to change that for him. Ham HR Workbench. Jeremy and those guys out there have their own talk group on Brandmeister. Some people ask me if I'm going to get my own talk group on Brandmeister. No. Nah. Just be not because... Not, any, not that there's anything wrong with that. Just because... I spend a lot of time on so many different talk groups. I, I don't need my own talk group that I want to hang out on. I want to talk to everybody else on their talk group. I don't, I don't want my own talk group. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. Change back here. Go there. Uh, ham Radio Workbench. Good. So we're going to go to Local 10. And that ought to do it. And then I'm going to go add. So I've added my channel. So now I need to go add it to a zone. DMR mark. I'll add it to that zone. It's doubtful that these are actually DMR mark repeaters in here, but you never know. Uh, Jason, there we go. Add. Boom. Okay. Now we're going to write to the radio. Clone. Right. Right. Got a clone feature in it. That's pretty cool. So you can program up one radio and plug it in another radio and clone clone it to the first one. There we go. I had to go on in here and manually choose. I had to go into program and and uh, communications port and manually choose the port that I was using. So some radio CPSs you have to manually choose the port and some of them you don't. This one I had to. Not, nothing wrong with that. It's just... It's just a step I had to take. I got a, I got a couple of really cool things coming up in the next couple of months. Some uh, new avenues and new types of shows I'm going to be putting up on the channel. So I hope that uh, I get some get some interest from you guys. Now, what we're going to do is go here, radio rebooted. Like that. I'll bring the radio around here in a minute. Okay, so... There we go. Nope. There we go. Zone, okay. So you hit the button. There's, there's two white buttons. There's a call button, a green call button, and a red call end button. And there's a white button above each one of those two, and then there's a toggle right here. So if you hit the white button on the top left, it takes you to the menu, and you can toggle through uh, settings, contact, messages, call logs, attachment, and scan, and then zone. So I'm going to go zone, and I'm going to go to... No, that's not right. It took me into contacts. Zone. There it is. Okay, I hit the white button again after zone. I'll show the, I'll I'll do a close up here in a second. DMR mark. There we go. DMR mark local. Uh, oh. Oh, that's why. Okay. So, you got to change channels with the with the Channel selector at the top, the up and down toggle in the front doesn't change channels. Okay, there it is, Jason. Now, what I did, the channel that I programmed in here was for the Grapevine DMR repeater, which is about three miles from here as a crow flies. And I, and I put it on their 
uh, Tarrant County Metroplex talk group. So let's see if I can hit it. Oh, KC5 HWV testing on Tarrant County. Uh, let me go. I'm going to go turn my mobile radio up or my base station up. One second. Okay. Hopefully you heard that in the background because I turned the volume up on my base station over here. KC5H should be testing on Tarrant County Local. I don't know if you can hear that or not. One, two, three, four. <laughs> so, apparently there's... I'm kind of hitting it and I'm kind of not. It kind of depends on where I stand. Um, and I've... <laughs> <laughs> and I have Terry's call sign still in it, so it comes up as his uh, subscriber ID. So I didn't change that, but you get the point. That's not a legal. That's not a legal way of identifying subscriber ID over the air. If you use someone else's subscriber ID or typo your own subscriber ID on DMR, you're not going to get in trouble for that because you still have to verbally ID your own call sign over the air. So just FYI on that. But it came up in my base station as NX7R which is Terry's call sign, because uh, he had it programmed for himself, and I have the Worldwide Database programmed into my into my uh, base station there. So let me show you guys the screen real quick. I'm going to stand back here in the camera, and this is the screen, obviously, and it's silent right now, so... So it's just a black screen with white text on it, and uh, this is the button here. It takes you into the menu, and you can go to zone. Oops, I hit that. Zone. And we're at uh, six zones in here. You can see zone six of six. Let's go to LV analog, Las Vegas analog. And then you've got your, and see that once you're back in the zone, that doesn't do anything. You have to change your channel at the top uh, selector knob there. But uh, that's volume, that's channel. Uh, one thing I do like about this radio over some of the Chinese ones, the belt clip is attached to the radio body, not to the battery. So you get multiple batteries for it, and um, wouldn't be a problem because your belt clip is, uh, you just need the one belt clip. So, that is one good thing about it. And then the antenna, I think it's just a regular standard. Yeah, the antenna is a standard SMA female with a male connection on the, on the body. So, they did it right. And for 239 at HRO, you know, that's a pretty darn good price in my opinion. So, that is the Hytera AR for amateur radio, 482G like Golf. I got a nice user manual in here with uh, made out of what looks to be recycled paper. So they're very green. And then it does have a desk charger also. Some of those, you know, one of the biggest disappointments about that Kenwood D74 uh, D-Star radio I had is it came with a plug-in charger and not a desk charger. I bought a desk charger from uh, Richard at uh, Main Trading Company. So I now have a desk charger for my Kenwood D74 radio, but a 600 freaking dollar HT should come with a desk charger, not just a plug-in cable to the side of it. I thought that was pretty lame, um, but such as it is. Anyway, um, once again, uh, Terry's uh, website is TTG Tango Tango Golf Communications dot com, and he's out in the Las Vegas area. And he is a Hytera Motorola dealer, does a lot of commercial stuff, but he is amateur friendly for those of us who want to use some of the higher quality radios for DMR. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, shoot me a, uh, uh, I got a new email list. Go to livefromthehamshack.tv and look, I think it's on the, which side of the page is it on? I think it's on the right-hand column.
Well, it's not on the front page yet. Okay, so if you go to ham rate, go to live from the hamshack TV, and you click on episodes to see my episode list, it's on the right hand column. I'll add it to the front page. Just got a brand new email list. Um, sign up there. I'm going to start sending out weekly emails with every um, with all the different episodes I have and what what's coming up next and that kind of thing. So 73, and we'll see you next week. This has been Ham Radio 2.0, a YouTube production by KC5HWB. Visit our website at www.livefromthehamshack.tv. Please also stop by our Facebook page at fb.me slash hamradio2. Be sure and subscribe here on YouTube to keep up with all the new videos that are posted nearly every Monday. 73s everyone and thanks for watching.